guys, welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. Now in today's tutorial, we will be making something like this. So this is a lower thirds, and if you don't know what a lower thirds is, it is what pops up in the bottom left hand or right hand corner of a video. And it shows a person's name, their position, a title, whatever you know, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't have to be in the bottom right hand or left hand corner, it can be in the middle, at the top. Whatever, whatever you want, whatever you're, wherever you feel like putting it. But yeah, so we got a quick little punch in. Then we have this cool thing that opens up right here at the bottom, multiple colors. Cool happens, tutorials. All right, let's get started. So first off, we need to open up After Effects. Now that After Effects is open, close this dialog box. Um, we are going to create some stuff. So first off, we need to create a new composition. So in your project panel, um, you can right click new composition or click right here on this little button down here. It'll be a new composition. So we are going to call this lower third. Now 1920 by 1080 square pixels, 30 frames a second. And the duration, what yours can be, I don't know. Um, it can be 15, 18, whatever, but for lower thirds, I usually like to keep it 10. 10 seconds is just long enough. So, background black color. Okay, cool. We have our composition. Next, we need a background. So what we're going to do is right-click in our timeline. New. Solid. We will call it BG for background. And 1920 by 1080. And let's keep it black. Okay, cool. Go ahead and lock the background because... We don't need to touch it for a while, but what we're going to do is draw a shape. We're going to draw a rectangle with the rectangle tool up here and draw it out. This looks pretty good. Real quickly, we will use this tool and grab the anchor point and put it in the middle of the shape. Awesome. We now have our shape on the screen. So what we need to do now is actually make it open up. So what we're going to do is scroll forward in our timeline to about two and a half seconds I guess or let's say uh, right here is good and click S on our keyboard to open up scale another way to see the scale is drop down the transform tag right here but we'll just press S for scale and we need to key the scale at 100% right here so hit the little um, hourglass and make the keyframe cool now we will scroll back in time and make the scale zero to make it disappear now you're gonna go ahead and see that it's gonna scale proportionally so stays proportionally while it scales. Cool. But we don't want it to do that. We need to unproportion the scale. So this little box right here, tick it, and it will only scale one at a time, not proportionally. Really simple trick. So we instead of scaling like this, we want it to scale like this. So take this down to zero. And if we close down our work area a little bit, and we hit play, we can see that it just scales just like that. Cool. All right. Now we need to make this look nice. So what we'll do is we'll highlight both these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. There's a shortcut where you can just press F9, but it's nice to know where that's coming from. So now we have easy ease. And it's still looking pretty good. It looks better than last time. It's moving well, um, but we can go even further. Now, we're about to dive into the graph editor, which there are some tools to get around the graph editor. We're going to have to use it, but I think it's important that you know how to use the graph editor before you jump in making shortcuts. So first off, click the graph editor right here, and it'll open up this. So this is the actual movement of the shape. And what you want to do, if it's you don't see it, right here, you can click this little drop down right here. You can see edit value graph, which is this one, or edit speed graph, which is this one. Now what we're going to do is edit the value graph. So what we can do is actually click on this, and it gives us a little busier handle, and move it out some. And then click on the one on top, and move it out some which is actually grabbing the other one. So we'll zoom in a little bit, grab this one. Still wants us to grab the red one. We don't want to grab the red one. We want to grab the green one and move it back some. We'll move the red one back down to normal. 
And if we play this now, it should look a lot smoother. Pretty good. I think we can take it further. So grab this and stretch it out even more. Try it again. Not bad. I think I like that. Cool. We have our shape. Next, we will turn off our graph editor. Back to keyframes. Oh, our keyframes, where they go? Press U on your keyboard. It'll show your current keyframes. Now, we need to change this shape's color. So what we'll do is click our pointer tool, click on a shape, and change the color. Let's change it to blue. Blue is awesome. Let's do blue. Blue. Next, we need to make another shape. What we'll do is just duplicate this shape. So Command-D, duplicate this shape. Click U to see the keyframes. It is the same exact shape um, on top of it. So what we'll do is click on Shape 2 and change the color to, I don't know, let's do, let's do yellow. Cool. Now, they're both moving at the same time. All we'll do with Shape 2 is just offset it a little bit. Offset it in the timeline, and now you'll see that it does something like this. Oh, how cool is that? Gnarly. Sweet. We have our first part of our lower thirds. Now we just need text. So what we'll do is actually click the text tool right here, click right here, and type cool happens. So click your pointer tool, um, press S to scale your text up a little bit. We'll move it to the corner. It's going to scale from this point right here, so we can actually scale it up quite large. And we're going to turn our background off so we can see what's going on. Hide our background with the eye. Need to turn our background off, so we'll hide the background with our eye and turn the background off so we can see it. And what it's doing is the shapes are revealing under the cool happens, but we want the cool happens to reveal on the yellow shape. Really simple trick to get this done. What you'll do is you will duplicate the shape you want it to reveal on. You will duplicate it. You will take that shape and drag it above your text. And really easily you can click on your text, which is under this shape now, and on the track mat settings right here you can drop down and click alpha mat shape layer 3 and what this is telling After Effects is I want this text to only reveal inside of this shape and the shape has been hidden so here's the shape on here's it off and the text will only reveal under the shape so neat little trick track mats they are awesome so hit play boom part one done looking good all right, so let's organize this up a little bit. We will change the text to yellow, shape, 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 looks good. Next, we need a new composition for the other part of the lower third. So lower third, two, and the settings are fine because they're the same as last time. Click OK, and we will also draw another shape out. Make this one about like this. Then we'll do the same thing again. Grab the this tool right here and grab your anchor point and put it right here. Cool, cool, cool. Now, we need this shape to kind of whoosh its way in from the side. So what we're gonna do is keyframe the position this time instead of the scale. So what we'll do is hit P on the keyboard, bring up your position, click the hourglass to key it right here. Actually, let's move it down some. Let's key it right here. So the keyframes right here, then move it back off the screen and grab it, hold shift and move it out. So this is going to whoosh its way in. Cool. Now highlight both of these, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Like again, you can hit F9, but I like doing it that way for some weird reason. So we'll back this uh, work comp down some and we will see how this looks. It's not awful. But it's not awesome. So we're going to go into our graph editor and edit it. It looks it looks kind of crazy right now. Not very helpful. We're going to fix this though. So what we're going to do is actually zoom out, and then we're going to click Edit Speed Graph. Okay. So in our speed graph, we can click here and click here. So basically, this is an arc of when it eases in and or eases out and eases in. So what we can do is grab these bezier handles and move it back some and then move this in some. So what this is going to do is going to go in slowly, speed up and then go out slowly. 
So change the Bezier a little bit. We can kind of preview it to see how it looks. That looks a lot better. Cool, so we can see the arc has been changed. It speeds up and then goes back down. Really simple graph editing. So this is the speed editor right here to get that kind of stuff done. So turn the graph editor off. We are good with this now. And yet again, we're gonna type some text out. So click your text tool right here. Type cool happens and then put it right here. We're gonna scale it up and we're gonna change the font color. Now there's two ways to do this. You can click on cool happens and actually drop on the character right here and change the font color. Or you can do what I like to do sometimes and cl actually click fill in your effects and presets. So drop a fill tag onto it and you can change your font color right here. Now, there's a reason why we do this in the future, but that's for another tutorial. But for now, this is the way I like to do it. So, and then we can also drop a fill tag on our shape and actually make it, uh, yellow is pretty cool. Let's keep it yellow, but keep it yellow, cool. Awesome, cool happens. And you can see the shape goes out and goes in. Just like before, we need to duplicate the shape because we want cool happens to appear when the shape goes under it. So duplicate the shape, drag it above, cool happens, do track mat, alpha mat, shape layer two. Now we're telling cool happens to only reveal when this shape under it moves under it. Just like that. Now what we're gonna do is actually go in, right click, new composition, lower third, final. And click OK. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You could have pre-composed all these layers. You could have you know, then put them together, but I like to make a composition. Then we can take our lower third two, drop it in. So it goes like this. Scale it back so we can see it happening. And then take our lower third and drop it under it. Move it down. So move our anchor point and scale it down some. And what we'll do is actually open up this composition, double click, and actually change this shape color. So we'll drop our fill tag onto it and change it to red. Red looks cool. Let's do that. Go back to lower third final. Now this is red. Put this right here. And what we'll do is move it forward in the timeline so it appears after Cool Happens has arrived. And then boom. Boom. Now I think we can take this a step, step further. So what we'll do is uh, open up the lower third right here. And what we'll do is scale down the text, move it over, then go back to our lower third final up here. This little thing you can jump through your compositions within each other. It's really helpful. We will take our lower third and move it up some. Now we will go into lower third two and jump on our shape on the bottom, the yellow one, click T for your opacity and drop the opacity down some. Cool, cool. Jump back to lower third final and it now does this. Now we'll take the bottom one, move it down some for a cool effect. Jump back into lower third two, bring the opacity up more. Let's make it 80%. Cool, cool, cool. Now what we're gonna do is actually drag in a background image into our project panel and then just drag this image right here to put it in front of something. So scale this back, the image, so we can see what this looks like on a screen and actually it doesn't look half bad. Now we're actually gonna change this text right here on lower third. Let's do tutorials and we will center line the text and actually move it over so it always stays in the center. And yeah. And one more thing. What we're going to do is we're going to highlight both of these, pre-compose the layers, call it final product, and we will 
keep all these settings the way they are. Click OK. It's the final product. So what we're going to do, there's all your lower thirds. Create a folder, lower third. Take all of these, drop them into the folder just to keep it organized for the most part. And then, yeah, once it's organized, uh, it's pretty much done. There's one more thing you could probably add to this, which we could do effects and presets CC force motion blur and drop it onto here which will give it a nice blurry effect as it comes onto the screen um, but you can play it let it render out real quick and see what happens awesome there you go um, so that was a simple lower thirds tutorial um, not too complicated I hope it helps um, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, thanks guys uh, Stay tuned for more.